Now, local government is crucial as it's the level of government where service delivery takes place and citizens engage with government directly. So what is the current state of local government in South Africa uh, and uh, what needs to be done to make it more efficient? Joining me now to talk about this is Limpopo Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, MEC Baskopo Makamu, head of uh, local government uh, here in Gauteng, uh, uh, Bongani Klilishe, and uh, Governance Advisor and Forensic Auditor, Dr. Peter Goss. To be a part of this conversation, you can tag us on Twitter at Newsroom 405, or you can send us your WhatsApp questions and comments to 072-110-5584. Gentlemen, good evening, and thank you very much for your time, and thank you for joining us in studio. Thank you very much, Tavo. Thanks to the viewers as well. I'll start with you because you're here and you'll get the benefit of, of, of going first. If you look at the picture being painted by the Auditor General's report for 2017-2018, it tells you that the state of local government is in a crisis when it comes to uh, financial management, when it comes to uh, preventative control measures being put in place, uh, when it comes to uh, performance reports. I mean, I think uh, a, 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 a scary 13% uh, only got their uh, uh, performance reports uh, correctly. So my question is, is local government in a crisis and what's the genesis of this crisis? Well, thanks, uh, Tabo. I may not say generally that it's in a serious crisis, but uh, you remember that we are celebrating our 20th into local government since 2000. And there are serious challenges I must accept to an extent that uh, there are areas where could be identified as gaps within the local government in order to, for it to work. And currently you might have seen a report issued by the public protector which is showing local government in an area where traditional uh, leadership operates. But I can say that there is a lack of leadership in the majority of municipalities uh, that requires to be strengthened. And of course, I'm coming from the African National Congress, where we have looked at to the matter that in terms of our deployment strategy, we should also consider uh, skills, capacity, and academic qualification for people yes. who will hold strategic position in leading our municipalities. And you'll know that all of us as political parties during this year will be going to uh, the local government elections. And we have started in terms of preparation, in terms of sifting and looking at what, who could be suitable. Yeah. But of course, there are some issues that need to be changed. Let me give an example if I want to zoom in specifically into the terms of audit outcomes. Yes. You find that in, uh, contract municipalities appoint MMs and the directors reporting to the MMs on a five-year contract basis. Yeah. And that will always, in the three-year uh, term of an MM or a director, he starts to look that his contract is coming to an end this person will be looking for a job yeah. and you lose the institutional memory of part, that particular municipality. Right. These are some of the areas that continue to contribute. But, but let's, let's look at your municipality or your province in particular, right? For the past three years, you've had a, 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 a disclaimer, according to the Auditor General, in your audit outcomes. It's only in this particular audit outcome that you got a qualified audit. And the reason why you got a qualified audit is because you used a lot of consultants, right? Which in itself is a problem because you used a lot of money for you to move from the disclaimer to the qualified audit. That is not a question of traditional leaders and you. It's just a question of people who are in positions who just cannot use money correctly. Who, for example, the Auditor General makes an example of um, uh, preventative control measures of contract management. Like, before you get into a contract, and it's in the uh, Municipal Management Act, Financial Act, what you need to do, and people just, just don't do that. But here's the question. In the many years where you've had this disclaimer, give me one instance where somebody has actually been held accountable and they were fired. Well, I will give not one example. I will give you more than one example in that respect. But I want you to uh, consider the fact that I said. You started by the... 16, 17 financial year, where a number of disclaimers and adverse audit opinion were there in municipalities. Yeah. This year, we are in the final year of the term of administration, that is five years. Hence, you will be able to pick that one of the, our municipalities in the uh, province, Capricorn District Municipality, was able to get a clean audit. 
meaning that they were able to account for everything. But as we speak now, in the province, you only have got only two municipalities which are remaining on the adverse uh, and the disclaimer audit opinion, and that is Mukhalakwena uh, uh, municipality and Mudimule uh, Mukhopo. Uh, if you look at the progress that we have been, has been made, it's exactly what I was telling you. Now, because they are maturing in terms of the 2016 as they got into councils, yep. now leadership uh, municipalities or municipal managers, CFOs, they start to understand the system because now you have heard them. I don't th think so. I beg to differ. I mean, it's not that they're understanding the system. It's that you have to go outside and get expert opinion at a price to come and move you from the disclaimer to a qualified audit. That's what the Auditor General tells us. There is a clear relationship between this improvement and the amount of money that you've spent on consultants. I can also beg to differ with you to say there is a municipality which has spent a lot of money in terms of their consultant, but still goes to a disclaim. The fact remains that uh, in some instances, it is true that there should be leadership. In the province, we have seen when people invested money in the VBS, about seven mayors were recalled in the province, you could be able to see that MMs who invested, who have done wrong in terms of the act, have been acted upon. Disciplinary hearing were he held. They were dismissed, some of them. Number of issues. Yeah. On a monthly basis, we get reports that we are charging people who are able. You will remember now in Mukhalakwena, the uh, provincial government have placed the municipality under section 139. Right. Uh, B. I, I, I'm going to come and talk about that. I don't, I don't want to rush it. I want to get into it a little bit more and you can give us the details. But uh, Dr. Peter Goss, let me bring you in here. Uh, as far as you're concerned, it, what is the state of our local government? Is it in a crisis from a point of the systems in place? So systemically, right, there are fiscal constraints. We understand that. But over and above that, there are administrative issues that are resulting in many of our municipalities are being, being bankrupt. How do you read the situation? So my assessment uh, on the subject of efficiency and uh, I heard earlier on leadership being put forward as one of the challenges, I'm not so sure we're hammering in on the real point when we just simply reduce it to a question of leadership. I think what we have a serious problem with is a lack of corporate governance founded in a concept called collective action. What you've now got is that the corrupt who are supposed to be part of the solution are now part of the problem. So in good corporate governance, you would have an effective controller and you would have therefore an efficient system because of an effective controller. I fear we're now in a place where a political elite is actually no longer the effective controller but perhaps cynically, I would say the effective criminal. So the effective criminal is dominating the potential for effective control. Now, good corporate governance is about building sustainable stakeholder value creation, not value for an elite. So to reduce it just to the word leadership, well, if the leadership is involved in corrupt activities, then you're not going to get to a state of good uh, corporate governance. Yeah. You see it in the Audit General reports coming through all of the time. And the, the, the concern with uh, good corporate governance manifested, by example, in the less than 10% of local government entities having what they call clean audits. Yeah. That's a clear indication that there's a lack of sustainable stakeholder value intention. Rather, there's a political elite development intention that, co that co contradicts, conflicts with the imperative to build, build value for society. What is the role, I understand you saying the role of, of, of politicians, what is the role of national government? What is the role of provincial government? What is the role of other institutions like the public protector in assisting uh, municipalities to be uh, uh, on, on, on the right footing? You, you make a... You make a very good point. Pardon me for interrupting. So we're missing each other by about a, 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 a second there, I think. But I got your message. So when I tout the concept, internationally renowned concept of collective action, capital C, capital A, collective action is when you acknowledge sometimes that those supposed to solve the problem are part of the problem. Then you start to diagnose the collective action problem. 
The biggest pro uh, element, uh, nature of a collective action problem is that the fixer is part of the problem. So as soon as we admit that the fixer is part of the problem, then everyone else involved in collective action can pressurize the fixer to also be part of the solution. But you need more than the fixer to solve it. So you look at the COVID-19 crisis, for example, and the PPE corruption, and the private sector getting involved in the solution, securing, procuring vaccines. I hope that the private sector insists on being part of the control system over the deployment of those vaccines. If they abdicate or hand that over to the political elite to run it, we will end up in the same situation that local government is in, yeah. the corrupt leading a solution with bad intention. <laughs> so we need pressure. I, 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 hear, you. Business, I, I hear you, Dr. Let's, let, let, let's hold that. Let's take a break and we'll come back in a moment. The MEC chuckles in the studio here. And I want you to talk to that very question. When, it, when you look at the Mukhalakwena uh, situation where you've intervened and you have put in an administrator, right? It seems the situation is getting worse as opposed to getting better. And part of what is the challenge is the political interference that is at play. It's a deep dive, a look into local government, what the challenges are. Joining me to talk about these issues, Limpopo, or Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, MEC, Pascopo Makamu, as well as uh, we'll try and make a connection. We're trying to get him on, head of uh, the Gauteng Local Government Department, Bungaini Kalisha. Uh, but we have with us Governance Advisor and Forensic Auditor, Dr. Peter Goss, to be a part of this conversation. You too can send us your tweets at Newsroom405 or your WhatsApp questions and comments to 072-110-5584. Before the break, MEC, uh, Dr. Peter Goss raises the question of the fixer is part of the problem, right? If you ask Sanko, for example, if you ask Kosatu, for example, in the province, they would agree that the fixer is part of the problem. The administrator you have put in place in Mukhalakwena is part of the problem because up until this point, I think it was in November 2019 that you placed the administrator there, uh, if I'm correct, or maybe slightly later, but what has actually happened? What, what improvement can you point to as far as water supply, as far as refuse uh, 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 collection, as far as uh, 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 ablution facilities and sanitation and so on and so forth? Let me first agree uh, to a particular extent with uh, Dr. Goss that uh, in the majority of cases where the system collapses, it's through that leadership, uh, I will still maintain that, or political leadership in a municipality tend to leave their responsibility, upgrade responsibility to an extent that I can uh, liken the situation in some municipalities like an egg, where there's the yellow and the white. But the moment you find that the two get to mix, you can't see where is the white, where is the yellow, then you have a problem or something like you'll call, you'll call an omelette. It's simple because when leadership has started to understand because maybe they want, as individuals, to be corrupt and want to steal, they then collude with the administration that you can't separate which one is the administrator, which one here is the uh, political, who should provide oversight. But if I were to come to the specific uh, issues you raised in terms of Mkhalakwena municipality, I can say that we placed the municipality around December. The administrator was placed uh, around the 17th of January. That's where he started or uh, appointed to start. You will know that we had COVID. I will not want to hide or under COVID, but some of the implementation plan that we're supposed to carry in order to make sure that we put the systems, because the biggest problem in the municipality was that the system uh, was collapsed. You find that uh, when they are doing their procurement process, you, they can even sometimes pay an invoice when work has not been done yeah. completely. And you, you will not want to rush uh, to go and deliver water when you do not have the systems that can be able to deliver water. Right. So the bigger part of what he was doing was to put systems in place and to get to the bottom of the challenge. That's why not less than nine officials in the municipality, some have resigned, some have been charged for the fact that supply chain management process was not done properly. You will find that their HR process was not necessarily their financial management. That's why they were one of the municipalities with the highest uh, irregular expenditure in the yeah. country. Yeah. And those are the things that you'll be able to look into and try to want to correct. Yeah. Then the second phase in that situation will be to make sure that the systems will be able to deliver services. Right. Because you can't just write, uh, you want to follow the very same thing you find that they were uh, running delivery of water with yeah. uh, irregular contracts. What you do first, you should 
cut those uh, or terminate such contracts and be able to get into the proper contract. So I can say to a particular extent, yeah. a certain progress has been made right. to an extent that we can be able to know now how do we pay invoices, the uh, system to verify whether work has been done or not. Yeah. I agree with you to say water has not been restored in that part of the uh, municipality properly, but there have been some projects that we can be able to report to that they have been delivered within the period the administrator was there. But it's not enough to the people of the province. But also, but, but why is it not enough to the people of the province? Why, why are you failing to deliver? I tell you, uh, one of the issues that they're raising, which you are firmly opposed to, they had said to you, fire the mayor, because the mayor is not delivering. When you, well, you've come up, you said a similar statement to say, well, there are places where mayors have been fired before and it really didn't change. Much. No, of course, now in Mukhalakwena, we, we have changed the PMT, we have changed the executive uh, committee. I had the meeting with the new leadership of the municipality, uh, the PMT and the Exco last week, the new team. And I was able to introduce them to the uh, administrator and seek their cooperation, but also the administrator should be able to support the leadership because that was some of the deficiencies that were seen to say. Yeah. Some of the things... But those people you, saying they're not going anywhere. No, 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 the ANC says, no, they must tow the line and, and follow the party uh, uh, but direction, I'm, but they're saying they're not going no, anywhere. No, I'm taking the recent information and I'm giving you... Right. The council has been able to sit... Uh, some three weeks ago, and elected the new uh, mayor called uh, Franz Mukwili. The speaker is uh, Pilar de Oliphant, and then the chief whip uh, is uh, Staff Tsev. Those I have met in the office and the new executive committee, I have met with them. I still met with them and briefed them in terms of the theft of reference and their expectation of the government because we are supposed to monitor and support them right. and be able to say by the time we go to elections, the system should be in place so that that municipality could be able to deliver services like other municipalities right. and deal with small challenges right. that may affect each and every municipality. So the decision of the PC has been carried. A new team is there. We are supporting them and we hope that they will support the work that is being done. And I can agree that the satisfaction as an MEC is not up to scratch in terms of the work done by the administrator, simply because of the challenges we, we are uh, encountering in terms of the implementation plan. Okay. The milestones we should have achieved has not necessarily been achieved all of them. Let's bring in Bhavan Kulisha here, head of uh, the Gauteng Local Government. Bhavan Kulisha, good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time. I mean, what is your view uh, of what is challenging our local municipalities? The Deputy Minister, after the AG's report last uh, year, says, well, one of the issues was, one, they are systemic. There are fiscal constraints that... Uh, 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 keep municipalities from uh, uh, doing what they're supposed to be doing. So there needs to be some innovation and some creativity that is injected there uh, as far as coming up with new ways to make money, revenue, uh, and how to use that money properly. But there's also a question of leadership, political leadership that needs to be in place. I mean, there are other issues of managing the very assets that you have and ensuring that uh, those assets actually bring you value. How would you analyze it? Yes, I don't know. Uh, can you hear me properly? Indeed. Yes, uh, I think that that analysis is correct. It's a it's a combination of many factors. Uh, there are systemic systemic uh, issues, um, you know, which have a long history uh, in local government, but all, at the same time, there are also man-made uh, problems which I think uh, we have no excuse really uh, to continue to have such problems in local government. There are systemic issues in Gauteng. Uh, we have uh, commissioned an investigation uh, into, the, into the state of local government. And uh, they've pointed out, you know, uh, some of those uh, systemic, systemic issues, uh, including uh, issues of uh, financial uh, management, financial challenges, that are facing local government. As we know, I mean, the expectations are very high. Uh, the demand for services is very high, but the resources at the disposal of, uh, of municipalities is, is, is quite limited. Uh, it's particularly the situation now uh, with the COVID, uh, as we know that uh, uh, the country has experienced uh, a series of lockdowns. Uh, as a result, uh, uh, people were not able uh, to pay for services. Yeah. You know, because of a number of reasons, some people have lost jobs, you know, and 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 so on. Uh, factories have closed, 
So, uh, you know, the revenue of municipalities has, has rather been challenged. Uh, there are also issues of service delivery. Uh, as you know, that uh, uh, the local government is at the call phase uh, of service delivery. It's very close to the people. Uh, people are raising, uh, you know, legitimate expectations, legitimate demands on local government. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, local government is not yet positioned uh, to to be able to meet uh, those demands uh, because demands are very are very huge, you know, and the limit and the resources are very limited. Yeah. Uh, what, what, you know, well, I mean, what 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 what, what 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 do you do in a situation where you are having a credibility crisis with the, the consumer uh, and the consumer says, well, I mean, I, I don't want to pay these guys anyway because they are just failing at the coal face of, of, of delivery to, to manage their financials properly. 18 out of 257 uh, municipalities got their financial position right. 18 out of 257. According to the uh, Edit Auditor General, the rest disastrous in terms of your financial position and how you manage that. And for, for, for the citizen, they look at that and they say, well, you have a credibility crisis. Why would I trust that I give you money you're actually going to, to use it for what uh, it's supposed to be used for? You see, yes, I mean, in my own analysis, in my own analysis those are issues that I regard as men made, you know, we can we can resolve those problems. Now, that uh, you need a, a strong political will and administrative will uh, to deal with those problems. Uh, indeed, uh, I mean, I would understand if people were saying, "I'm not going to pay because uh, the kind of service that I'm getting is not up to standard," or "I'm not going to pay because of this or that reason," which. I think uh, it's, 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 a, it's a reflection of leadership. Um, you know, leadership uh, is key, is critical uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the confidence, uh, you know, uh, that people have uh, with municipalities. So, so it's, those issues are a reflection of, of, of leadership, be it political leadership, administrative leadership. So it's nothing to do with the systemic systemic issues. Yeah. These are the issues that can be resolved, and they are they are main made. They are they are, they are, they are created uh, by our own way of doing things. Okay, uh, which I think uh, those issues can be resolved. So, Peter Goss, you wanted to jump in. Jump in in the. Uh, is it as easy as that? Uh, they can easily be fixed by political will and uh, a touch up of administrative issues. So I have a fundamental problem with this diagnostic that this is a systemic problem. You had a very conflict from the, the views being sketched now that actually it's less a systemic problem, but an endemic problem. Endemic meaning there is no inherent intention to fix that cannot be reduced to being a desire issue. It is that the inherent desire is actually not to fix. The inherent desire is to pilfer. The inherent desire is to defeat the system. So it's an endemic desire to reach an end state that is broken so that pilfering can go on quite strongly. So in my opinion, once we confront the elephant in the room, yeah. which is the endemic nature of all role players, not the word leadership. The word leadership is too narrow. We already know leadership is, is, the, is part of the problem. The problem is now across the entire um, endogenous environments. So we need to work around everyone and everything. Yeah. We keep reducing it to resources, yeah. finance. The Auditor General's report is not a financial report. It's a corporate governance report that also assesses performance. Yes. Not performing is not reliant on money. Yeah. Performing is to overcome the endemic problem of a desire to avoid performance. Yeah. It's very big.
Now, so we must confront that elephant in the room. Look, look, look at by how collective look, action of society yeah. confronting those players. Look at how the Auditor General is trying to confront that particular question. Uh, for example, the Auditor General is saying uh, we have now beefed up the powers of the Auditor General to be able to, uh, for example, if um, there is a financial maladministration of a particular kind, right, that uh, maladministration is brought to the attention of the accounting officer and the accounting officer is given a certain period to say, you need to rectify this. And if that period uh, elapses uh, and the, the accounting officer does not rectify that, now with the powers of the Auditor General, that accounting officer can be slapped with a debt bill to say, this is how much you owe in municipality. I, I, is that the kind of action that would bring people to, to take accountability to, in your word, to want to do the right thing? It's another solution. I want to remind you, the Public Finance Management Act and the Municipal Finance Management Act have always created an offense called financial misconduct. They have always, other policies in government and local government have created a framework that empowers action in the event of non-performance, corruption, and a manipulation of what should be managed efficiently and effectively. So the AG is merely a further complement and reinforcement of that old policy that's always existed. So I think we're looking at the wrong place in thinking that the Public um, Audit Amendment Act, with its creation of a system for material irregularities will solve our problem. It will improve our ability to solve our problem, no doubt. To address the problem, we must go back to the existing laws, the Municipal Finance Management Act for the purposes of local government, and act and stop condoning 18 municipalities having a decent audit and over 200 not. Nobody confronts that. And once we learn to confront that, which is not about finance, it's about performance too. It's about service delivery too. Right. Once people start acting against those who are not doing their jobs, yes. Then we're in business. All right, conversation just getting really heated up and exciting at this point about what it is that we need to do in our local government. Joining me to talk about this issue, Limpopo Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, MEC, Baskopo Makamu, head of the Gauteng Local Government Department, Bongani Tlilisha, as well as Governance Advisor and Forensic Auditor, Dr. Peter Goss. We're taking your comments in a moment at Newsroom 405, as well as on WhatsApp on uh, 072 110 5584. But I want to bring you in here. There seems to be an even deeper complex problem than uh, uh, a failure to adhere to systems or poor systems management. But uh, it is the political will to hold those who do wrong accountable. Yes. No, no, I agree with you. That's why I was saying there are both uh, systemic issues, but also uh, there are man-made problems. Uh, we cannot take away uh, the fact that there are systemic, systemic issues. For instance, if you bring together uh, municipalities that are very poor, you know, and, and, and you cannot hope that uh, that municipality would be able to sustain itself. Uh, so, so those are problems that have been created uh, through the demarcation process, where a number of municipalities have been amalgamated, but the reality is that those municipalities, uh, you know, they are they've been very poor. Now we have just joined uh, municipalities that are very poor, and you cannot hope that you'll get uh, positive results. And also the issue that uh, there's been influx of a, of a number of people from rural areas to to the urban centers. And uh, the municipalities now are faced uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the budget constraints uh, in order to accommodate the needs of those people. So I'm saying uh, the resources uh, are not consistent uh, with the patterns of migration uh, you know, uh, that are flowing into, into the urban, uh, urban centers. Those are systemic, systemic issues, but there are main made uh, problems uh, the issues uh, of, of, of mismanagement, right. uh, corruption, you know, uh, uh, poor governance.
those issues, uh, we just need to, to nip them in the bud. So they require strong political leadership yeah. uh, and, and also strong administrative leadership All right. in order to, to deal with those problems. So it's important that you also strengthen uh, you strengthen the oversight uh, uh, instruments right. that you have at municipal level. The All fact right. that AG, for instance, is able to expose uh, those uh, acts of mal maladministration, you know, you've got MPEG. You need to strengthen all those structures, internal audit audit committees and, and audit committees. Right. Uh, so that uh, we can expose and add uh, those issues uh, so that we can be able to deal with. Dr. Peter Goss, I'll give you a final word here before we part. The president believes that um, the district development model is one of the ways in which we can, uh, I suppose, have a, 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 a look, an overall look at what is happening at municipalities at a goal that National will be aware to, to, to pick that up. But also, he believes that uh, uh, hiring professional people into professional positions is going to be the answer. Uh, very briefly, uh, 30 seconds on your part. What do you make of that strategy? Yes. Yes. Hold on, hold on. It's just, both it's just, both uh, statements. Bam Kulisha, hold on. It's, this is for Dr. Peter. I'll come to you now. Dr. Peter, go, so go for my, it. My view. Yeah. Yes. So the beautiful model, the district development model, I must give it praise. I think it's, it's phenomenal by intention, but it's a systemic intervention too. No problem. We can live with that. Here's what you need to make sure you do though. You need to just do two simple things to solve this problem. We are preaching this uh, let's call it gospel for want of a better term. Since 1994, this issue of systemic breakdowns, and we got this from previous governments, and we got this dilemma, and we don't have resources. 25 years later, we have definitely had enough resources to make a difference to the life of my mother living in a township in Newlands East. Oh, we seem to have lost the, the all, right, all right, we lost uh, Dr. Peter Goss there as he was making that point. But the point is, we seem to have had enough resources, for example, for the water projects in Limpopo. But the money was taken and put into VBS and we know what has happened. That's not my words. The words of the Auditor General saying, the challenge is a bulk of the projects that you have to deal with in Limpopo are water <coughs> projects. And the fact that right now they're not continuing is because a lot of the money that was supposed to have addressed those uh, uh, projects is gone with VBS. You can't blame that on systems. Yeah, well, like uh, we agreed to say, uh, corruption is there in our government in general, not necessarily only on local government, but simple because local government is very close to people and that's where service delivery is expected. That's where you see that a uh, lot of corrupt activities are seen at that level because uh, they are very close to the people and they can feel easily communities when they don't necessarily receive that. And that's where I agree to say uh, action. And now as you, you talk about the Public Audit Amendment Act, it's coming with this irregular materiality that also will put people to resolve. And I agree to say all these things that we are trying to implement, we are trying to make sure that uh, we strengthen and want to come with solutions to the problem. Yeah. As we speak about the oversight capacity building, because the other thing uh, I must indicate about that, uh, we may talk, we may talk, but if we don't necessarily have capacity that will be able to lead municipalities of people that will not necessarily rely only on administrators, uh, that will give reports every time, they give you Section 71 reports, they give you, you don't even read them and understand them, you will always take that to cancel. So strengthening leadership in municipalities will also be part of the solution in terms of making sure that accountability on the accounting officer and other directors becomes a reality. So that is part of the uh, resolving of a problem to make sure that uh, we fight corruption. It is true that uh, the act has been there and uh, people were reluctant to implement some of the things and now are being pushed to make sure that uh, we do have the financial service board that will be able to take. And I can tell you there are a lot of municipalities that now are coming on board and have that and making sure that people get suspended, yeah. get to be fired. And we're going there and I think I'm hopeful uh, if we continue to have a team and try to get some people who have got capacity as we speak in this current term to go in the next term, you will be gradually see municipalities. Where I'm sitting, like I said, that uh, one municipality is, is the drop in the ocean, got a clean audit. But we have got the number of municipalities which consistently 
has been getting a, an unqualified audit outcome. And doctor is correct. It's not only the financial management that was able to help you. We are even going further now to look when you spend money, is there a project on the ground? Because spending money does not necessarily that there's work on the ground. Right. People might, might, might continue to spend money, but now the systems we are putting together with the district development model, it's to see the project on the ground, balancing with what is happening in terms right. of the... Let's see hear, let's hear what the people are saying. There are some people sending us uh, some WhatsApp uh, comments here tonight. Local government is uh, in shambles. There is so much corruption and uh, the and its functions are not being adhered to, such as delivery of uh, water and sanitation, and the maintenance of roads. in Mahiking. Our municipality is filled with comrades who lack skills and qualification. You find municipal employees gallivanting in town during working hours. Tembani in Midrand. Uh, this one from Puselitz in Pretoria. What happens to the officials who are corrupt in the local government? All the same rules apply that they don't step down, they continue with their duties. All right, Tabang, yeah, with a bullet point uh, outlining what is going on. I'm worried about Kada MEC by scope because since he arrived in office three years ago, he delivered 10 houses to Zanin, completed RDP to the, uh, the what, Distining, uh, and Zone 8, a part of administration of uh, returning some of corrupt mayors who collapsed VBS, failed to come with amicable uh, strategy to fix Mohala Kwena. Uh, we uh, know him as Limpopo MEC without implementation. Political deployment without qualification is paying back to friends, uh, killing a local government. That is Taba. Okay? That's what the people are saying. I think it's good feedback for you uh, to take with you and reflect on it. But unfortunately, we are out of time. Let me thank you very much for coming through and being with us today. Thanks very much, uh, Tabo, and to the viewers out there. But I still believe that uh, working together with all the people responsible, we can still get it right to the municipality so that they can be able to deliver services. Much appreciated. Thanks for your time.